Hey, collective, time to tap, tap, tap in. Okay, so there is going to be a situation where someone's innocence, lack of knowing, lack of preparation is going to cause another person to be completely frustrated and angry. Now, this scenario is set up to me like, though this is likely going on in maybe an office environment, a work environment, I do see it as um, somebody being upset with a six month old for crying while they're on the phone. They know that this baby doesn't know appropriate times to express um, their feelings, but they are extremely pissed off, extremely upset with the fact that this child chooses now to cry sort of energy. This might happen in someone's work environment. Um, this could be in some sort of relationship where someone is fully aware that the other person is out of knowing. They've never done this before. This is the first time for them. They're completely innocent and it still won't stop them from being frustrated. However, this frustration might build up into some form of abuse. It could be verbal abuse. It could be physical abuse. It could be um, ab abandonment or neglect happening here. Um, I see someone being slapped across the face as if to say, get it in your head. Um, or I see like um, someone being kicked, you know, like it's, this is because the person who's expressing the frustration is not used to having um, to compromise their ability to just move forward with what they're knowing to stop and consider people who might not know. So, or to consider something that's not in alignment or on its level, okay? So, however that looks in your environment, keep that in mind if you are an innocent person going into something where you don't know, just know there could be some level of frustration towards you um, or violence, abuse in, in one way, form, or fashion. All right, we're going to go from that to the next thing. There might be an Okay, Spirit just said there's going to be some shuffling that happens. And something is going to be lost, left behind, okay? Now, this won't impact you negatively, but it might actually benefit you in some way, form, or fashion. I see somebody carrying like a huge stack of papers and then one thing is left behind on the floor, but this person isn't returning and they aren't turning around to see it. This might benefit somebody in some way, form, or fashion. Now, whatever this is that's going on, it doesn't have to be papers. This is just something is going to be forgotten that helps another person out. But this is kind of, I heard divine timing. I also heard divine alignment. So it's happening in, I heard spirit place the order is what I heard. And now something is going to be delivered, okay? Because something is being forgotten or shuffled around. I heard made to be confusing also, okay? Now, moving on. I just heard Nick, Knack, Patty Whack, Give the Dog a Ball. I don't know that whole song, but I can hear it playing over and over in my mind. Also, there's currently a dog chewing on a bone in front of me, but I was not even paying attention to him when that came in, but, um, but now that I'm talking it out with you, I hear a masculine telling someone, give a dog a bone, like throw me a bone, throw me somebody here. I heard an alley-oop. I don't, I know that that's a basketball term, but I don't know what it means per se, but I feel like somebody is going to be coming to someone else for help some sort of relief they're asking you to like give them a hand throw them an opportunity a chance or something like that i'm not sure that this is um do whatever you choose to do of course i'm not sure that this ask is going to be beneficial for you though i also think that something about this ask might put you in a bit of a bind 
And this person who's coming to ask you to do this, they know that. They know that this is going to put you in some sort of bind, okay? Okay, there, there might be some, okay. There might be some sort of intention that's going on to keep a person in a place. I feel like I feel like I'm running through a maze and every time I almost get out a person presents themselves in front of me and they tell me like go a different direction but it leads me deeper into the maze I'm wasting more time and then I find my way again I find a different way to get out and a different person presents themselves to me and they're like wait you forgot to do this go back and do this and it's like every time somebody almost gets out of whatever this cycle is, whatever this, this maze is, they're presented with somebody. This is what's going to happen though. So somebody keeps going, what, it, what this is, it's a cycle. It's showing me that it's a cycle. So somebody is trying to get out of a cycle, but every time they get to the end of it, they find someone reroutes them back into this cycle. This time, when they, they have it in their mind, they this person has it in their mind. They're like, when I get to the end this time, if there's somebody standing there, I'm gonna knock them out. Now, I don't, I don't think that that is um, literal. I think that's figuratively. I think that this person who's continuing a cycle or, or they find that they're repeating a particular cycle. Also, Spirit just showed me, whenever you go back through the cycle, you're stripped. They told me, they, they showed me a person like their clothes being stripped off. So somebody might be stripped of everything when they're redirected or reguided um, back around, okay? With that being said, maybe this person has been stripped of everything more than once. This time when they are getting to the end or they are close, somebody can smell too, like I'm at the end because I, I can smell like I am... I don't know what that means exactly, but I can smell like I'm coming to the end of something. But in this person's mind, they're like, if I go to the end and there's somebody standing there, I'm going to move them out of the way, tell them I don't give a fuck about what I missed. This is the wrong way. I will figure it out on the other side of this wall. That is the right thing to do. Also, that might shock or surprise some people or the person who's going to be standing there to reroute you. Also, they might be standing there. I feel like they're standing there with a young child. And that is supposed to cause you to pause. Okay? You won't. You won't. Not at all. I, I see this person kind of like getting down on one knee, kissing this child on the forehead, and still taking this route out. And they get out and they just open up their coat or their jacket. And they're just like free. Okay? So... There is somebody has decided like I'm not doing this again. I'm, this sounds really similar to like yesterday or day before yesterday when I said that somebody was like, I'm not going back. I'm not turning around. I'm looking straight. I think that this is a continuation of that energy and spirit is confirming. Yes, it is. So um, now someone is also realizing in their mind, somebody is figuring out like, oh, these people were all working together to keep me in this maze. Now, by the way, Whoever you are while you're in this maze or in this cycle, these people who have kept you in it, <coughs> excuse me, they don't accompany you on the walk. So you're put in a cycle or a maze to be by yourself for an extended period of time. These people only appear when you're almost out of that cycle again, but they do, they are not on the walk with you. They are not helping you regain your clothes back or rebuild or anything. They only show up when it's time for you to walk away. So whoever you are, keep in mind who shows up when you're almost done with something, when you're fed up with something, when you've made a decision to leave, to stop something. Who are those energies that have shown up? In some sort of way, these energies are all connected. It could simply be they're all connected because they all know you. But I feel like they're all connected because they 
no, like you go in next, you go in, you go in, and, and they work together to ensure that you remain in a cycle, but somebody is giving that up, so kudos to you, okay? Moving on. You might be in an office environment, a lot of this has to do with work, guys, but you might be in an office environment or um, you could be on social media, have a platform. I feel like this is like TikTok or Instagram um, anyway, or it, it, it could be any platform. Don't limit your um, imagination to what I'm saying to any particular social media platform, but you could also just be in an office environment as well, where you hear someone who is either a celebrity, someone with a really large following, who you wouldn't expect to be watching you, paying attention to you, hearing you out, repeat something that you have said and something that you might say all the time. Something is like signature to, um, I heard your brand, your focus and your goal. Right. So you might hear like a celebrity spirit just said this is going to cause a problem for you down the line. OK, I can see. OK, so what what's going to happen here is when you realize like there are other people with larger platforms or with um, celebrity clout fame who who are kind of re what you've said and carrying it off on their own you might again at first be very excited like oh my god oh my god they just said what I what I say I know that they're watching me something like that might happen but then there could be something that goes down where you start to notice this happening more and more you might find yourself constantly um, applying for trademarks or um, yeah, you might begin to trademark words or trademark uh, particular phrases or trademark things because you need to be paid for your lingo that people are now being used. I also feel like somebody takes somebody's words and they put it on a t-shirt and they're selling them. So you might, um, this might cause a problem for you in the future because you might have an issue deciding, well, what do I trademark and what don't I? I can't decide to trademark everything I say. But there might, whoever I'm talking to, you might have signature phrases or you might come up with words or break down words and make them sound a different way or say them differently and then you hear that again. You'll begin to know what to do and you'll be applying for trademarks a lot, okay? You might even find yourself in some sort of uh, litigation situations to be um, noted and credited and financially compensated for this sort of thing. Spirit is confirming yes. Okay. Last but not least, moving to the last thing. You might have made a decision recently to do something um, For some of y'all, I heard provocation, and then I heard plan, and then I heard project, okay? So if you've decided to provoke somebody, if you've decided to put together a plan or um, complete a project, there are people coming around looking like, what you doing? These are people who you may have decided to leave behind or not to inform what you're doing. It's best that you hide what you're doing until you're ready to release this. I do think that there are energies who are interested in knowing what's going on in your reality so that they can work behind the scenes. Um, again, Actually, I don't think you should be telling anybody anything about what your plans for the future are. I don't care if your plans for the future are, um, I'm going to go to the holiday party at my job. I don't think you need to tell people that. 
If you're going to go to the holiday party, invite the person you're going to invite to go with you and just go. Don't make announcements on it. Do not make announcements on So Don't be typing out on social media what's going on in your life. Don't be making posts. Me and my friends have decided that we're going to do a podcast. Don't do sh uh, none of that. Okay? Just work behind the scenes and release your when it's released, promote it then. Promote it as already being out. I keep feeling like I have to tell somebody, do something three or four times. Have three or four of whatever you are working on prepared and working on number four or five when you release the three. Because I feel like there's like, you know how fast fashion is made? As soon as a celebrity wears something on the carpet, there is a company that's copying it. And the next day you can buy it on Sheen or on Timu or whatever. That's kind of going to happen to someone here. It's almost like you got to have enough of something out already to fully claim responsibility or like it's yours. Also, somebody is going to do something that other people can't copy. That is going to piss some folks off. There are going to be people who are going to try to take something that you have recreated or um, rebranded in some way as their own. I feel like you're going to be like, give me that money. Give me that money. Because something you're doing, you're either pioneering, trademarking, copywriting, getting a, a patent for. Like something is original thought. It's original content. It's original creation. It's original invention. And you are going to find other people are absolutely going to try to take it for themselves. In some groups of you, there's going to be um, maybe three feminine energies that get together to copy one feminine. And other groups, um, I feel like there's going to be um, men who are coming in to copy a group of like three men. I feel like these are like three black guys are creating something. They have to fight off like, oh, bottom of the body goosebumps with that. So for progress, they're going to have to fight off like a board of people who, who are trying to steal their, you know, this board might actually call some somebody in. This could be a group of three men, though, or it could it could be anybody. But I I specifically see three guys. They could be calling these men in, like a board or a group, to discuss their idea, to discuss financing them, being their silent investors or something like that. The T here is they want to steal um, whatever this project is or invention. They might give these people some original money as investors, but then they might do some loophole things with lawyers to take this or steal this idea from these people. Therefore, if you are scheduled to meet with some sort of group or a board about an idea you're working on or something that you have in the ether, I would absolutely, absolutely... Um, have the presence of maybe an intellectual property lawyer with you, okay? Don't hire a criminal defense lawyer to go in here with you. You need like a corporate lawyer or an intellectual property. I, I would really, really, really caution you to have an intellectual property um, lawyer with you, attorney with you at that time. Because these men who sit at this table, I feel like they're very wealthy. They could also be very impressive in whatever their lines of work is. It almost reminds me of something like Shark Tank, to be honest. Um, but, and it could be, somebody could be going on Shark Tank. Be careful with however you decide to do something because there could be somebody here who's interested in stealing what you have giving you some money for it and knocking you out of the box. And the money that you get would be big um, or big to somebody who doesn't have any money. It could be like $5 million or something along those lines. But this is like a billion dollar idea or a billion dollar business you have on your hands. So giving you $5 million and they're going to make a billion, that might cause somebody a bit of anguish. Also, something about this is going to be stolen, okay? So make sure that you are protecting yourself, praying, constantly praying, asking your ancestors, your spirit guide, God, your team, 
to protect what you have created, to protect what they have sent through you, to ensure that you get the compensation, the maximum compensation that you're supposed to get, that it, you know, lasts and is able to benefit your lineage for generations to come. Um, and don't just be like for generations to come, be like for seven generations. I want it for a hundred generations. Be specific when you're talking to spirit. Don't be like, and I want my kids to still have this because guess what? Your kids will have it all up until they 10 years old and then they won't. So be very specific. I want whatever I'm creating to last my lineage that, them, that you know, my lineage is able to uh, live off of what I create for the next 100 centuries or for the next 100 generations or seven generations or not, whatever you want, be very specific about that. And also be very specific about the protection you're looking for. Please protect the idea. Please protect me from anybody coming towards me to steal my idea with ill will. Please protect me from my enemies, those I know and those I do not know who want to take from me, who want to stop me, who want to relegate me to something less than what I deserve. Be very specific when you're talking to your team. Don't just ask for general protection. Break that thing on down to what exactly it is you want to see done and have done. And whatever you do, don't be negative when you're talking to your spirit guides. You know, block me from these people who are trying to steal from me. No, no, no. Anybody who wants what I have, protect me from those people. You don't have to be negative about it. You can just be positive and focus on yourself. Protect you how? Protect, protect what exactly am I protecting? Am I protecting the product? Am I protecting the idea? Am I protecting the manufacturing? Am I protecting the country where the manufacturing is going to be done? Am I protect, you know, am I protecting the, the owner of the of the factory where the people work? Are you protecting the, the people who will actually be creating your product in whatever country they're in? Protect their economy so they can come to work, protect their mental health. You got to be specific. Ask for everything. Don't leave anything out. And that's just with protection. Okay. When you're asking for the thing that you want to show up, be very specific in what it is. I want a car. I want it to have 20 inch rims. I want it to have this kind of engine. I want it to be this car made in this year and this color. I want the tent to be this color. I want the wheel to be like this. I want it to be self-driving. I want it to be very clear and specific with what you want so you don't just end up with something. You know, I need a car so you get something off the used car lot that's only going to last you for three months before you got to put $1,500 into it again. Uh-uh, I need this car to be brand spanking new. I want it, I want to be there to watch them pull the new plastic off of it for the first time I don't want it sitting on the lot when I get it I want it delivered off of a truck I want to watch them pull the tape and the plastic off of it I want to be the first person to sit in it everything just be very specific in what you're asking for and I guarantee you it's yours it has been a gift and a blessing to dive into the unknown for you I look forward to doing it again soon toodles poodles